Good afternoon. Just got done recording a number of sermons and I thought I'd uh, give you the good outline for what makes a good sermon according to the scriptures. We're in the book of Acts chapter 24, beginning in verse 24. And after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, um, or Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Um, I'm not ready yet. I haven't, I don't know, that's kind of a rough thing. Um, but you see, there are four things there that you read in the context. Uh, verse 24, you have the faith in Christ. Verse 25, you have righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Uh, any good preaching will have those four factors. Faith in Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer. Point people towards Jesus Christ. Then you will have righteousness. A real preacher will turn you to righteousness. All right? And how do you do that? Temperance. What is temperance? Fighting against sin. Learning to temper, to put your flesh down. Uh, when you temper a blade, you're, you are quenching that blade with heat and you're heat treating it and things like that. You're, it's tempered steel. Well, as iron sharpeneth iron, the Bible talks about, a man will do that with his friend. Uh, two saved men will have some parlaying with their sword, the sword of the spirit, and saying, let's fight. Well, I believe that the church is here for the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, touche. I do not. Clang. Well, what are the scriptures that you would give? Well, if you go to this scripture here, clang, and you go to this one there, cling, clang, cling, you're fighting. You're going back and forth with the scriptures. That's real being a real Christian. Temperance. Fighting against sin. When you don't do that, oh uh, well, that's a problem. Um, you get these modern church buildings with some little sissy effeminate girly boy up front there and he's got skinny jeans on. I don't listen to any man who wears skinny jeans. I'll just tell you that right now. Uh, well, it's a modern style and whatever else. It, it's a sissy style. It's an effeminate style. Um, men need to dress like men. Women need to dress like women. And when you get that thing confused, you start to have all kinds of issues and problems. Um, it, not, it ought not to be so, brethren. Um, you need to be dressing like a man if you're a man and dressing like a woman if you're a woman. It's just that simple. And um, walking back here through the property, uh, trying to find something. My son dropped his one saw, so I'm trying to see if I can find it for them. My wife and my son were walking back in here today. So now I have to try to find the saw that he dropped. Um, it's a good one, it's a silky saw, so I don't really want that being out here in the rain. Um, I can't understand how any kind of man with red blood in his veins could sit through one of these modern church services and where they talk about Jesus with a lispy Jesus, you know, and they, Jesus can help you with your problems and he can give you a good marriage and, and everything would be nice and sweet. <laughs> Uh, I find that disgusting. Effeminate men make me sick. Um, and the Bible says that uh, in the end times that God looks and he says they're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. They make me sick. In other words, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Um, God is not for effeminate men. Not at all. But that's what we have today in modern professing Christianity. Uh, rather disturbing. Um, but just wanted to make a little quick video here as I'm walking along. I have to get back down to the office again. Uh, this is a work day for us. Like I said, I got four big sermons done. They'll be coming out. This one will come out before them. But uh, just been thinking a lot about this. Um, yeah, I had a, a great benefit growing up, and that was that uh, 
my father in particular, he was stuck in a time period about 20 years beforehand, before I was being raised, maybe even 30 years actually, if you really want to get down to it. Um, I was raised like children would have been raised in the 1950s or 1960s, and yet I was born in 1975 and grew up in the 1980s. But looking at my old pictures of when I was a little boy, um, a lot of those pictures, it looks like children from the 1960s. My father thought that the 1950s was probably the best time ever. He used to talk about that. And um, so, you know, for me, I was raised with a lot of the old ways and old time. That's why I kind of act a little bit older than my age in many ways. I remember years ago helping my oldest brother move some things. My oldest brother is 14 years older than me. So he's quite a bit older than I am. And um, I remember we were, there was a bunch of guys from his modern Sissy Bridges church that were there. And, uh, and the one guy, he said to me, he said, so he said, uh, you're, you're Tom's older brother? And I said, no. I said, I'm Tom's younger brother. He said, you are? And give me this confused look. Really? See, because my brother is, he's, a, because my brother, he's a modern Christian, you know, so they're always trying to make themselves look younger. Um, I'm not into that movement either. But, uh, he's, you, you're younger than your, than your brother? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm younger than my brother. He said, how much younger? I said, 14 years younger. You're 14 years younger than your brother? He said, I thought you were older. Yeah, because I act older. I understood a long time ago that there's wisdom in old age. And uh, I like to talk to older people. I'm not so much into younger people when it comes to talking to them. Um, I appreciate somebody has some years behind them. That's what I like. And uh, I've had the benefit of hearing some really good old time preachers. And a lot of the old time preachers, they were, they were a little bit on the carnival side, you know, that they get into the yelling and the, you know, you need to get right of your sin, amen, you know, and, and they get into the, some of that stuff and they yell and pound the pulpit and whatever else, you know, and I'm not into that acting stuff, but you know, a lot of what those guys said, uh, they, they hurt people's self-esteem, you know, they would be, they were rough with a lot of what those old guys preached. And what they taught and uh, I appreciate that I can't stand this modern stuff and you know something if you're a sort of a younger Christian and um, you're all concerned about you know my attitude and whatever else you really should listen to some old-time preaching uh, you know Peter Ruckman he's got his issues I don't agree with the guy and everything but uh, a lot of his sermons were a real blessing to listen to i recommend him i recommend listening to guys like that get some of these old preachers that just tear your hide off make you feel bad about yourself <laughs> that's the way it should be brethren um felix trembled at the preaching of paul paul wasn't there you know and and just felix please Please understand, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He thinks about you at night when you sleep. And he's just there and he watches you with a father and he loves you in a, you know. Hey, Felix, I want to preach to you about the faith in Christ. Um, you're a sinner. You're not a very righteous man. You need to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You need to be temperate. The way that you're living there, Mr. Noble Guy, the way that you're living is not right. You're not right with God. You need to have some temperance in your life. And you know something, Felix? If you don't, you're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn forever, Felix. You want that there, partner? Felix is up there and he's trembling. I've seen a few people tremble. 
different times. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're scared. <laughs> a lot of times I've made people tremble because they're angry. That's one thing I do miss about church buildings, you know, seeing the, the act reactions of the people. Because <laughs> I used to make people really mad, make people get upset and everything else. I mean, you had the people that were really, you know, thankful and whatever, and okay, great, praise the Lord. But uh, some of them, they got mad. Which, uh, whatever. So, that will be it for this video. Um, don't look for preaching that makes you feel good. Um, you want to find preaching that has those four elements. The faith in Christ, righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.